If you want to film a spectacular movie featuring battles from the Second World War, what do you need? Certainly, world famous actors, a big budget, suitable visual props, and, of course, tanks, especially the Mighty Tiger. Since most German tanks have long since added up as scrap or in museums, finding an original one that is still working is almost an impossible task. So, what do you do when you need a German Tiger but do not have one in your garage and cannot convince Bovington to loan you theirs? You make one. How? By using a proven formula. You take a spare Soviet T-3485 and add some cosmetic makeup. Now you have something that can very much look like a tiger from a distance, with enough effort. But this is what the Yugoslavs did during the filming of a few such movies. Following the conclusion of the Second World War, the newly created Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was heavily influenced by the heritage of the communist resistance movement in almost all spheres of public life. This was probably best represented in the TV series and movies filmed up to the start of the 1990s. The most prominent movies of that time were The Republic of Usidze Sutjeska, Walter Defense Sarajevo, and The Battle of Neretva, to name a few. When it comes to movies with a historical theme, of course, it is necessary to use props that are reminiscent of the period depicted. This was not an issue for Yugoslav cinematography, as the Yugoslav partisans managed to capture huge stockpiles of enemy weapons and vehicles of all kinds, including tanks. Many of these would serve as a foundation for the creation of the new Yugoslav People's Army, or JNA. Tanks and other armored vehicles captured during the war saw limited use in the early years of the JNA. Not surprisingly, many of them quickly fell into disrepair after the war, given their age and lack of spare parts. So, by the time the partisan-themed movies were filmed, none of these could be reused. The JNA did have vehicles that were used by the Allies in its inventory, which were present in large numbers and in a more workable condition, such as the T-3485 and Sherman tanks. Thus, during the filming of larger and more important movies, the JNA was often called on to provide the necessary equipment and men. The Battle of Neretva was filmed in 1969 and was the most expensive movie ever made by Yugoslavia. It was famous for starring foreign actors such as Yul Brenner, Orson Welles, and Franco Nero. Another interesting fact was that Pablo Picasso did the movie poster intended for the world premiere. This movie initially had a huge budget of over four and a half million dollars and was supported by over 10,000 Gen A volunteers. It was shown in cinemas around the world and was even nominated for an Oscar as a foreign film. This movie follows the plot of a series of events in Bosnia during 1943 as the Axis forces try to isolate and destroy a large contingent of partisan forces and fail to do so. For the Battle of Neretva movie, over a dozen or so tanks were utilized. These were mostly Gen A T-3485s with some minor cosmetic changes. Some vehicles were modified more extensively to resemble German Tiger tanks. Of course, it has to be taken into account that when these films were shot, the availability of quality literature that dealt with the topic of armored vehicle was generally rare, at least in Yugoslavia. Thus, to some extent, it can be understood that using improvised mock-ups to represent German designs was completely irrelevant to an audience of that time. This is likely the case even today, as most audiences would not see it as a major issue, while a few overzealous tank enthusiasts might scream internally. The Tiger was never used in this part of Europe. Such rare beasts would have never been effective in hunting small partisan units in hilly terrain, as their job was to spearhead German assaults and decimate enemy armored forces. Using these in any other role was simply a waste of the resources. Given its general effectiveness, the Tiger has, however, 
become one of the most iconic tanks in history and a symbol of the Nazi war machine. As the JNA did not have such tanks, the easiest way was to recreate them using what they had at hand. The producers of the Battle of Neretva movie went for imposing visual effects more than historical accuracy. Using such a well-known tank as a tiger in a movie where it can be seen destroyed by a much weaker opponent could be seen as a symbolic act of bravery and illustrative of the inevitable demise of the German forces. The best suited tank that could be modified for this purpose was the T-3485. It was available in huge numbers and, with some improvisation and modifications, it was the closest thing that could resemble a Tiger tank. At least four T-3485s were taken from the 329th Armored Brigade and would be adapted for this purpose. The Yugoslav film workers managed to build some decent Tiger replicas for the time. It was not just merely adding some cosmetic changes, as they actually put some extensive effort into making them resemble Tiger tanks. Sadly, precise information on how these vehicles were assembled is hard to come by. It is likely that no one at that time gave any thought to writing articles or even mentioning them in books or any other publication. The T-3485 and the Tiger used quite different suspension designs, with the Tiger tank using torsion bar suspension with eight large overlapping wheels. The T-3485 on the other hand, used a Christie coil spring suspension. In contrast to the Tiger, the Soviet tank only had five road wheels. Visually, from a distance, these two shared some similarities, at least to someone who is not familiar with either the history or the design of these vehicles, as both used large road wheels without return rollers. Given their likeness, it was logical to reuse the T-3485 for this purpose. Other tanks in Gen A inventory, such as the Shermans or the M47, used suspensions that were obviously quite different in every aspect. The superstructures on the Tiger and T-3485 tanks were also different. The German Tiger used a simple box-shaped superstructure that covered the upper part of the vehicle. In contrast, the T-3485 superstructure design incorporated highly angled armor plates. The people responsible for the creation of these vehicles had to make a number of changes to adapt the T-3485 in order to resemble the Tiger as closely as possible. They did not have to change the overall dimension of the vehicle, as obviously no one was going to use a measuring tape to actually measure it. Luckily for them, the Tiger superstructure simplicity offered a quite straightforward solution which essentially was the installation of a box-shaped frame around the T-3485 body. While not perfect, and to some extent disproportionate, it provided a relatively decent resemblance to the Tiger. As a final touch, a driver vision port and a machine gun ball mount replica were added. But these were obviously not precise copies of the real ones and were misaligned in order to allow the centrally placed T-34 driver to actually see where he was driving. The turret was another major difference between these two vehicles. Luckily for the Yugoslavians, the Tiger turret also had a simple design that made it relatively easy to replicate. The T-34-85 turret was encased with a frame that imitated a Tiger turret. While it was not an exact copy, it was similar to the original. The last part that needed to be adapted was the main gun itself. Both the Tiger and the T-3485 used similar caliber guns, with the first being 88mm 3.46 inches and the latter 85mm 3.34 inches. These prop tanks were never going to use actual live ammunition besides simple blanks. Therefore, a mock-up mask could be placed above the original guns without fear of potentially damaging them. The frame construction that encased the T-3485 had to be robust enough to withstand stress and vibrations caused by the vehicle moving. It certainly would not be visually appealing if, during filming, some parts fell off. As mentioned, the Battle of Neretva movie was not exactly going for historical accuracy. 
The plot of this movie is more focused on the emotions and determination of the partisan fighters. It depicts their struggle, where despite all circumstances, the partisans fight on. To some, this may appear as a communist propaganda tool, in which their struggle and success were greatly exaggerated, which was certainly true. However, it must not be forgotten that the Yugoslav partisans suffered a lot of hardship in their fight against a militarily superior enemy who was often brutal and without mercy. It would take years of heavy fighting and sacrifice to finally see the enemy defeated and liberate their homeland. Such movies with this kind of storytelling are maybe not for everyone, but at least they serve a tribute to honor the service and sacrifices made during the war, irrespective of the horrors the regime they brought afterward inflicted. Of course, considering the main purpose of this kind of movie, tactics and proper use of armored vehicles were completely unimportant. They served simply to imply the enemy's superiority in every aspect, which makes the partisan final victory and struggles even greater. The Germans never used such modern vehicle in Yugoslavia in any noticeable numbers, let alone in huge concentrations. The tanks that saw actual service were much smaller and less imposing, but still, to a poorly trained partisan, even these may have appeared as invincible weapons. Thus, the fake Tigers and ordinary T-3485s could be seen in huge columns supported by German infantry. During action scenes, they usually simply rushed forward before being taken out by the partisans. The Yugoslavs are portrayed doing so in various ways, including using captured anti-tank guns such as the 5cm Pac-38 and the larger 7.5cm Pac-40. Both of these guns were used in Yugoslavia by the Germans, but were generally rare sights. They were more commonly used in action close to the end of the war, way beyond 1943, when the events of this movie took place. The 7.5cm gun had sufficient firepower to destroy a tiger, but the smaller 5cm was less effective. These tigers would again be used in another major partisan movie, The Sutjeska, filmed in 1973. The plot is similar to the Battle of Neretva, as the partisans try to escape a massive Axis envelopment. In this movie, the fake tigers appear to be further improved to resemble a tiger in more detail, such as adding a new command cupola, pistol ports, smoke dischargers, and other equipment. These three tigers could be seen at the end of the movie advancing towards the partisan positions. They would be ambushed by a Czechoslovak 3.7cm anti-tank gun operated by two partisan fighters. At close range, the Tigers are taken out one by one, with each being destroyed by a single round. While this surely gives a great visual impact for the casual viewer, in reality, this anti-tank gun would have been useless against the 100mm 3.93-inch thick frontal armor of the Tiger tank and would have struggled even against the 60-80mm 2.36 to 3.14 inch thick sides, even at point blank range. Although perhaps less well known in the world today, during the 1960s, Yugoslav cinema entered its golden age, thanks to contributing to several foreign film productions. A series of well-known movies were filmed in Yugoslavia or had Yugoslav actors in them. War-related movies were also filmed probably the best known being Kelly's Heroes in 1970, starring Clint Eastwood. The movie's plot revolved around the Allied liberation of France in 1944. The main protagonist is an American soldier named Kelly, who comes across information about German gold held in a bank behind enemy lines. He gathers a group of soldiers and a few Sherman tanks in an attempt to liberate the gold for themselves. They finally manage to locate the bank where the gold is stored, but find out it was guarded by three German Tiger tanks. These tanks were likely the same ones used during the filming of the Yugoslav movies, as the shooting was done in Yugoslavia. Of course, given that this was a cooperation between the American and Yugoslavian film industries, the visual effects were much improved. 
and these are best seen on the tank themselves. The quality of the detail added to the tanks is extraordinary and they resemble real tigers quite well. In the movie itself, the overall combat action is more realistic to some extent. The downside is that they still portrayed some myths, such as that the tiger armor was weakest at the back, which it was not. The Americans are shown using a Sherman armed with a long 76mm gun, which could have easily penetrated a tiger's armor at the ranges presented in the movie. The Sherman is actually a post-war M4A3E4 with a long 76mm gun in the regular 75mm turret, which had been supplied to the communist Yugoslavians as military aid by the US. The final fate of the mock-ups is generally unknown, but they were probably given back to the army and converted back into regular tanks. These may have then been scrapped, or they may have even seen service in the Yugoslav wars that followed. This concludes our look at the Yugoslav movie Tigers. In the world of cinema, tanks such as the T-3485 were often used to portray German tanks. What do you think of this Yugoslav adaptation? Let us know in the comments. If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber so you don't miss a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. The money comes back to you in the form of bigger and better videos. Until next time, keep us in your sights.